Praise be Jesus and Mary. Now and forever. Today is the feast day of the dedication of St. John Ladder. We're going to continue our reflections, which we begin at the beginning of the month on the Beatitudes, uh, the blessings of our Lord. Today we're going to talk about the third Beatitude, which is blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That's Matthew 5, verse 5. In the Latin Vulgate Bible, it's actually the, this is actually the second Beatitude, after blessed are the poor in spirit. And since poor in spirit means the humble, and these two Beatitudes perfectly describe the heart of Christ, who says, Come to me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Matthew 11, verses 28 and 29. The Greek word used for meek in the Beatitude is praus. Praus means mild or gentle. In the ancient world, praus was applied to things like light or wind or sound, so a gentle light, a gentle wind, a soft sound. Praus was also used to describe an animal that's domesticated. So an animal that was wild and has learned to interact with humans and to control itself. Aristotle defined every virtue as a mean or the middle position between two extremes. So in talking about meekness as a virtue, he defined it as the mean or the middle ground between stubborn anger on the one side, and he said that negativeness of character which is incapable of even righteous indignation on the other side. So meekness is the middle ground between uncontrolled anger and a sort of stoicism, not caring about anything. Another word for meekness is equanimity, which is a composed word. It's two words in Latin, equus in Latin which is evil and level, even and level, not evil, even and level in Latin. That's where we get the word equal from. Animus means soul, so someone who is meek has a balanced or an even soul. Equanimity, mildness, kindness, as human virtues are found in self-control or in even someone's natural disposition. For example, people who are phlegmatic tend to be more meek than other people. Christian meekness is rooted in humility, which comes from a renewed nature. St. Paul says in Ephesians 4, verses 23 and 24, he says that we are to be, quote, renewed in the spirit of our minds and put on the new nature, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So part of the renewal of our human nature is that we are called to acquire the meekness of Christ. The self-control which we're supposed to have as human beings actually becomes supernatural in that case. And we know that the meek are skilled at relying on God to set things right, not relying on themselves. Their strength is in the Lord, not in themselves. Proverbs 16, 32 says, quote, He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that rules his spirit is better than he who conquers a city. So a person can appear powerless on the outside, but they can possess a great inner strength if they are meek. They're able to restrain feelings and thoughts of anger and discouragement in the midst of adversity. <clears throat> One commentator translates this beatitude as, blessed are they who have every instinct, every impulse, every passion under control. But for a disciple of Christ, self-control is elevated by grace. Self-control becomes God-control. So blessed are those whom the Holy Spirit fortifies with his own spirit of control. Because one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, as we know, is self-control. Galatians 5, 23. Blessed are the meek can be translated as blessed are they whose strength is in their gentleness. Commentator Barclay says this, he says, No man can lead others until he's mastered himself. No man can serve others until he's subjected himself. No man can be in control of others until he's learned to control himself. In the Old Testament, Moses was said to be the meekest man on the face of the earth, Numbers 12, 3. Also David, King David, before he was king, he exercised great meekness when Saul was trying to kill him. We see that, for example, in 1 Samuel 24. Above all, Jesus is our wonderful model of meekness at his arrest, throughout his passion, really throughout his entire life and ministry. 
So would anyone say that Moses or King David or Jesus were weak or powerless people? I don't think they would. No, their strength was precisely in their meekness. The meek are those who patiently suffer persecution, those who remain serene and humble and steadfast in difficulty, those who don't embrace resentment or discouragement. Irritability often comes from a lack of humility, so we need to pray for those virtues of meekness and humility to combat that. Cornelius Alapide, the old Jesuit commentator, Bible commentator, he says he has five levels of meekness in his commentary. He says, one, first level, to converse with everyone with a meek and heart, humble heart and with gentle words. Two, to break the anger of others with a meek response. Thinking of Proverbs there, Proverbs 15, 1, where it says, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Three, to bear with gentleness all injuries and wrongs, which is, as we know, a spiritual work of mercy. Four, to rejoice in those things. So to actually rejoice when we receive insults and wrongs, which is not a natural response, of course, which is tied to another beatitude. Five, by our meekness and kindness to overcome the bad will of our enemies and those who are angry with us and to win them to be our friends. That's what the Apostle talks about in Romans chapter 12 when he says in verses 17 and 21, he says, Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but overcome evil with good. The reward for the disciples of Christ who are meek is that they will possess the land. Our promised land is heaven, it's paradise. The land here can also refer to the new creation that is to come, the new heavens and the new earth which the beloved apostle speaks of in Revelation 21. The gloss from the ninth century says that the meek who have possessed themselves shall possess hereafter the inheritance of the heavenly Father. Lastly, last thing we'll mention today, the Bishop of Genoa, St. Francis de Sales, would counsel us to be meek, to be gentle with ourselves as well. Just as peace on earth has to begin with me as the song goes, I used to sing when I was growing up in church, uh, so too meekness has to begin with how I treat myself. In his introduction to the devout life, St. Francis de Sales has a chapter on meekness towards ourselves. We just want to quote a couple of paragraphs from that chapter to conclude here. St. Francis de Sales says, one of the best exercises of meekness we can perform is when the subject is ourselves. We must not fret at our own imperfections, although reason requires us to be displeased and sorry whenever we commit a fault. We must refrain from bitter, gloomy, spiteful, and emotional displeasure. Many people, he says, are greatly at fault in this way. When overcome by anger, they become angry at being angry, disturbed at being disturbed, and vexed at being vexed. In this way, they keep their hearts drenched and steeped in passion, he says, meaning that we're just being controlled by our emotions when that's happening. Moreover, he says, these fits of anger, vexation, and bitterness against ourselves tend, tend to pride, and they spring from no other source than self-love, which is disturbed and upset at seeing itself imperfect. We must be displeased with our faults, says St. Francis, but... In a calm, settled, firm way, we correct ourselves much better by calm, steady repentance than by that which is harsh, turbulent, and passionate. Because repentance exercised with violence proceeds not according to the quality of our faults, but according to our own inclinations, he says. That's actually great psychological insight on the part of St. Francis. Last words that we'll share that are his. Believe me, Philothea, a father's gentle, loving rebuke has far greater power to correct a child than rage and passion. So too, when we have committed some fault, if we rebuke our heart by calm, mild correction with more compassion for it than passion against it and encourage it to make amendment, then repentance conceived in this way will sink far deeper and penetrate more effectively than fretful, anger, angry, stormy repentance. 
So what is fretful and angry and stormy in the spiritual life typically doesn't come from the Lord. As the prophet Elijah noted, we read that in 1 Kings 19, he said, the Lord wasn't in the storm or in the earthquake or in the fire. The Lord was in the gentle breeze, the still small voice, the gentle whisper. The Lord is found in meekness and gentleness. So let's learn, as St. Francis de Sales says, to gently correct ourselves, because how we treat ourselves is a good training ground for how we're gonna treat others. Let's also ask Our Lady for the meekness of heart that her and her son had to the nth degree. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever.